Hey, and welcome to AudioTech's seventh tutorial on Cubase 6.5. In the next two tutorials, we will be looking on recording and playback mechanics in Cubase. We already touched the subject just a bit in the first tutorials, but this time around, we will dig in deep. First, let's talk about playing back in Cubase. By now you know about the timeline and the grid. You also know how to play, fast forward or rewind your project. But one thing we didn't take a look at yet, however, is the locators. The locators is two points, one start and one end, that makes up a cycle. You'll be using this for a lot of the things you do in Cubase, like looping or skipping a section, doing punish recording, deciding which range within the timeline you want to bounce out, and a lot of other stuff. So there's no way around the locators. Let's take a look at it. In order to set your locators, navigate your mouse to the timeline. This is also the place you go for the timeline zoom and for navigating your cursor around your project. But if you hover your mouse on the top of the timeline, check out how the icon changes to a pen or the draw icon. Whenever this icon is visible, if you click it, it will set up your first locator at that point, indicated by a triangle pointing to a blue line. Actually, it's two locators glued together, so the start and end point is the exact same spot, which is, well, pointless. Hover your mouse on top of the locator. Now notice how the icon now changes to a hand. If you now click and drag to the right, you are now adjusting the end locator. And notice a blue shade contained within that extends from the original line. And also, you now see two white smaller triangles instead of the large one that was made up by both of them. When you let go of the left mouse button, you've now set up your locators. There's other ways to set your locators that I'm using all the time, but I'll cover that later in this video. If you hover your mouse inside the range of the two locators in the top of the timeline, notice how the mouse icon switches to a hand icon. And if you click and drag now, you can easily move your locators around for adjustments. You can of course also click and drag on any of the two locators to extend or narrow the range. Now let's try setting up our locators on another spot in the timeline. I'll click, then hover my mouse on the locator point until the icon changes to a hand. And now I'm gonna click and drag again, but this time to the left. Notice how the shade is red now. You will most likely only be using this type of locators when you want to skip one part of the timeline during playback. So if you encounter such a thing, see if your locators are shaded blue or red. The space in between the two locators is called a cycle. And even though cycles are simply useful in many cases, sometimes it's even necessary. Like when you want to bounce out your music. In that case, everything within your start and end locator indicates the start and end of your mix down. So get in the habit of always checking if your locators are set correctly before bouncing out your final mix. So with our locator set, let's see what we can do with cycles. Check out the cycle icon in the transport panel. It's looking like a line shape with first a short corner and then a sharp corner in the end. Whenever you activate this, you activate a cycle mode. In cycle mode, if you've set up your locators in the normal blue shade or the forward motion, you will loop that passage during playback. So let's try that now. It's incredibly usable when you mix and you're working on a separate section. Without it, it would be a nightmare to keep stopping playback and starting from the start of the section again. If you've set your locators up in the red shade by dragging to the left instead of right and turn on cycle mode, now everything inside that range will be skipped during playback. So let's try that now. 
When you are writing songs and are wondering if you should cut out a section, instead of deleting and moving stuff around just for listening to see if you want it, it takes 10 seconds or less to set up your locators and skip the section during playback. One last thing on cycles. The one way I most commonly set my locators is clicking on an audio clip within the range I want to cycle, and then press the keyboard shortcut Shift plus G. Not only will it wrap the locators around that point, but it will also turn on cycle mode. And I can then fine tune my locators. This shortcut can also be used in the MIDI editor, which we haven't touched upon yet. Next up I'll be speaking about the project cursor. The project cursor indicates the point during the timeline you want to play back from. Most commonly, you will be setting this up from the timeline. So if you hover your mouse in the timeline in the middle, not in the top where the mouse icon changes to a pen, but while it's still an arrow icon, you can click to set up your cursor position. If you click play now, Cubase will play back your project from that exact location. You can also click and drag in the timeline, like when you use the timeline zoom but this time from left to right and adjust the cursor position. Another way to set your cursor is using the fast forward or rewind buttons in the transport panel. There's a couple more ways to do it and we'll be looking at one of them now. You can set up Cubase so that you can click in an empty space of your project to locate the cursor position to that exact point. For this, head to the File menu and open the Preferences. Now go to the Transport category and click on it. Here you can tick Locate when clicked in Empty Space. And if you apply this, notice how we can adjust the playback position simply by clicking around. Very useful. Let's head back into the preferences for another very important setting. And this one is under the transport tab as well. By default, whenever you play back your project, Cubase will automatically place the cursor on the point you press stop. And while many people prefer this, it can be a real annoyance when you are editing your audio clips and have to locate your cursor for each time you press play to hear your edits. And from this tab in the preferences, you can actually decide whether you want the cursor position to return to the start position when you click stop. Simply tick return to start position on stop and apply in order to change that setting. I like having the option of changing that around during the different phases of a production. When I'm recording or listening, I like having it off. And when I'm mixing and editing, I like having it on. Cubase has been cool and given us the option of setting up a key command for turning it on or off. Mine is N. If you want to look into this, open the File menu, head for Key Commands, and search for Transport Return to Start Position on Stop. And then you can assign a key command. Alright, then one last thing on the playback mechanics. By default, the visible view of Cubase will follow the cursor. So as your cursor exits the visible view, going from left to right, Cubase scrolls the view to a new page in order to always have the cursor visible. And very often during editing, you want to deactivate this feature. And this can be done by the icon in the top of Cubase looking like an arrow going through a project cursor. And this button is called Auto Scroll. So whenever this is highlighted, Cubase will follow along. You can simply click it to turn it off or use the key command F. And that's about it on playback mechanics. If you've followed along so far, I think you're ready to record some music. Let's head on to the next tutorial on recording mechanics. See you there.